And I want to know everybody know that we are recording this meeting. Um, today is June 8. Um, this is the Northwest Gateway Sustainable Community Implementation Committee. Um, good evening, everybody. Oh my God, what's going on today? All right, so um, in a bit, we're going to go into welcome and introductions. Um, then we are going to be talking about um, an effort we are trying to do to revitalize East um, of Liberty Road um, to state revitalization program. Then I'll give you some updates on the cans and benches. Then we're going to do a discussion on the subcommittees. And then finally, we're going to be talking about meetings during the summer. So we'll quickly, I'm going to go to this, call names to see who's here, who's not. Um, and as you can see under each of the names, I have, um, you know, some type of affiliations if that was um, given to me. And as I, if you hear, as I call your name and the affiliation is wrong or I don't have it here, please let me know so I can update the information. Shirley Supik. Miss Devon Box. Here. Here. From, Here. Stony, from Stony Brook Community Association. And, and I can let you, I mean, briefly present yourself, but we have a heavy agenda. Okay, yes. I'm Devon Parks with Stony Brook Community in Randallstown, right up of uh, Winans and Carthage. Um, glad to be a part of the team. Thanks. Thanks. India Artis. Uh, hi, India Artis, Villanova Community Association. Oh, Villanova. So you are in the wrong box here. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Albert Bounds. Stephanie Hopman. Gloria Cooper Blue. And then we have a new member. Her name is Cynthia Gilliam. I'm not sure if she's here. Cynthia, are you here? Once I share my screen, I'm not able to see who's here. I think she's here. Somebody's raising her hand. Was that Danielle? Yes, it's Danielle Winky Smith. Hi, Danielle. Are you? Hi, how are hand? you? Good. You have your hand raised. Was that by accident? Oh, yes. I'll take it down. <laughs> it's okay. Sheila Lewis. Good evening. I'm here. And Sheila is from Villanova Community Association. Yes. Michelle McCallum. Hello. Uh, I live in Old Mill Estates. I'm a former association president, but um, I live in Old Mill. Okay. Thank you. Aaron Plymouth, he had emailed me that he was not going to be able to make it. Carla Nelson Chambers has also emailed me for the next two meetings. She won't be able to make it. I'm here. Oh, are you here? I'm here. <laughs> Did I just lie? Oh no, um, Carla, Carla is here. <laughs> I, when I emailed you earlier, I said I would be here tonight, but yeah. <laughs> Glad to have you. Back. Bye. <laughs> Yes, you. you're welcome. Bernard Jones. Kelly Thomas. Good evening. Good evening. I'm and from the Lockern area. Lockern area. Good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Grace Norden. Grace Norden is the one who emailed me that she won't be able to make it for the next two months. Um, she's getting married, so she's in, yeah, the preparation. Marilyn Evans. Marilyn just emailed. She's having difficulty getting getting into the meeting. I just oh, really. I just saw that also. She must have sent the email to everyone on the list, so it came in my box also. Um. Yeah, I wish I had a tech people here to just take care of that. 
I, I don't know how to exactly help, but I, I resent her the link and the dial in by phone information. Great. Thanks, Amy. I think that's the best way. Yeah. Jamelia Blount. Daniel Smith. Here. Linda Dorsey Walker. Sharon Hendricks. Hi, I'm here and I'm from Lifebridge, but I'm based at Northwest. So good evening, everyone. Hi, you are based on, I'm sorry, say that again. I'm based at Northwest Hospital in Randallstown. Okay, so yeah, yeah. Road corridor. Right. Yep. yep. So just because if you have not, you know, heard what I was saying, um, just in the beginning, I will be sending an email, um, kind of like a survey to let me know if you still want to serve in this committee. Um, I think it's very important that we have, you know, at least like, um, you know, major attendance in order to make sure that everybody is part of decision making. Um, if you have other commitments, I understand, um, and I can remove your name out of the um, out of the list. So um, look out for that email probably tomorrow or um, next day. So you guys know how I like to send emails on Friday at five o'clock. <laughs> um, I have a quick Kaylin, question. Have your yeah, place? um, Kaylin Thomas, she says she's with Lockhearn. Can I ask her a quick question? Sure. Is Robin Hill one of you in your in your um community? I don't know. Okay. Um, I think this is Sheila Lewis. I think Robin Hill is on the other side. It seems like it's in Woodmore. I would think maybe the Woodmore area. It's, it's, not, a, it's inside the Beltway. It's below Woodmore. It's more over like towards Flannery Lane. Oh, okay. If you know where the, not if you know where the, what is that? The post office or the dollar, something like that? The dollar general? And you, I don't know the name of that street, but it's back in there. I, I'm asking because I have a girlfriend that just moved over in that area. Um, and I wanted to try to see if I could get her connected with whoever had that community. Okay, so that would be like Kelso Drive or Kelso Court, something uh, Kelso, Kelso something. I think okay. that's that street by the bus office. If you want I only to... know because okay. we're gonna be talking about that 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 neighborhood. Okay. All right, so one quick quick a better a better source for that would be Shirley Supek for the Liberty Road Community Council because many of the community associations is on her email list and she might most likely have the information. And if I can comment, as we went through here, we some people indicated they were um, you just had this as a resident and they indicated that what community they were in. When you update that list, can you include that rather than just saying a resident to you know, put a community what community they're in. And also if someone is or representing or more than one organization, they might be from community association, but then they might be for another uh, you know, association like the Democratic Committee or something like that. It would be helpful to, you know, where people are. Yeah. Okay. Um and some yeah, somebody suggested that and I will be putting a list together and send it to everybody so you know who's who and what <laughs> affiliations. Yeah. All right, so um, at last meeting, I talked about that we have, you know, money or grant opportunity coming up from the state. Um, at that meeting, you know, I brought up the fiscal agent trying to find out if anybody in here um, had that capacity to, to take on that role. Um, it was clear that anybody in here had that capacity. So we didn't give up. We, we went out trying to find other options. Um, how can we take advantage of this grant? That is, you know, every year the state put it out. Um, a lot of the communities take care, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. And I wanted the Northwest Gateways this time to also take advantage of this one. So for this FY23, um, the state have eight million in um, for capital uh, for community legacy grant. Um, they also have nine million for strategic demolition fund. Um, they have thirteen million for Bernie. Um, in the capital fund um, part and also 500 K for operating funds. So all of these grants, um, you know, help with revitalizing all the communities. Um, it's very, um, it's for the whole state of Maryland and it's very competitive. So I have, we have 
contacted um, a community development organization in the area. Um, they are diversified housing development. Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to attend this meeting because of scheduled conflict. And we proposed to them, you know, being the sponsor to uh, apply for grant um, in order to maybe fund some projects um, for Liberty Road inside of the Beltway. And, you know, they, 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 they accepted it with eagerness and we are in the process of finding out um, how to finalize plans, projects that we are going to be uh, applying and the details. So, so far, I don't have any final say from, from Diversified and I also don't have details about the project that we're going to be applying for. The applications are open until July 13th, so which is approximately in one month. We need to find out very, very soon what we're going to be applying for um, and what the details are going to be. So as soon as I find that out, we're not going to be having a meeting, but I will be emailing, emailing you that information. In order to apply for Bernie, which is the program that is eligible for um, areas that are inside the Beltway, you have to have a target area. So the targeted neighborhood that we talked about is going to be Lacan. And the eligible projects um, that you can apply for would be anything mm -hmm. to improve existing residential and also the business properties. And as part of the application, the state asked for other you know, source of resources to leverage. And we're going to be talking about um, options that we can leverage with county programs. Any questions before I move on? Yeah. Well, I had a question. Go ahead. No, was, yeah, can we go back? <laughs> I think somebody, I'll let whoever. Okay, let's back. go back. Uh, yes, Miss Linda? Yes, I had a question. Why is that you specifically chose Lockhart as opposed to Woodmore since you, you said you're going to be targeting an area that has both um, residential and business component? There's not a lot of business component in Lockhart. Yes. Not as and, much um, as there okay. is in Woodmore. Right. And again, we're going to be talking about why did we come up with Lockhart in um, the next slides. Is that is that okay? Can I go to the next slide and talk about why we come up with Lacan? Okay. Any other questions? All right. So I, I want to talk a little bit about diversified. I mean, um, she really wanted to be here, but she couldn't. So diversified, um, if you are not familiar with them, um, they are the community, um, it's a community development organization. They are actually lo located on Liberty Road. And Shavon Jackson is the executive director. I mean, she's a just sweet lady who's always, you know, always ready to help the community. And doing this will also align with their mission and their goals. So they are also home ownership counseling. They do foreclosure prevention. They do housing development, um, as well as weatherization assistance. So um, why did we target Lacan? So what we're trying to do is we are going to be um, doing some type of uh, some type of um, revitalization in the commercial area, but also in the um, um, in the residential area. So this uh, the map that you see right here on the screen, you see that it's right there at the edge of the city line. Mm -hmm. So this is the only this is the first area that you hit as you get from the city line into the county line. Um, the properties in here are not in you know, great shape. Um, a lot of the storefronts need help. Um, this area over here is located in the CRD, which is the commercial revitalization district for the, for the county. Um, so we thought that maybe starting with this smaller area, again, we are doing pilot. And then by next year, because the, um, the deadline has been, you know, we only have to come up with something within a month. We wanted to start with something small, make sure that it's successful. And then by next year, we can expand whatever we are doing to other pop, uh, areas. 
And the Woodmore area that you mentioned, Ms. Linda, we also did, you know, talk about that area. It is a larger area, but we wouldn't, we thought that it would make sense to start with this smaller area that is kind of like the gateway, um, you know, as you get in from the city line into the county. And I'm just going to show you a couple of, um, you know, properties just to see, to show you the condition. Um, I'm sure you are very familiar with the area and that you have seen all of these properties. So this is one of the properties. Um, here is another one, um, as you can see, mismatch of uh, material, material, building materials. I mean, this needs a lot of help, could, mm -hmm. could get help. Um, in here, the liquor store with, you know, I, I, I always, I hate when the windows are all covered, you know, this is not in, not only like this is not, um, you know, safe because it's against that septet, um, but the crime prevention um, technique that we planning use, but as you can see, the facade can also use some, some help. Mm -hmm. um, in here, you can see, um, this is one that we like to, you know, talk about because as you can see, the facade has some, you know, turf, it's covered by turf um, material um, for the signage. Here is another one, the crab and seafood. I mean, it's it's cute, but it could it could get it could be it could be better. Here is another one. I mean, all of these properties again on this small area, they all look like this and could need some um, some improvement. And the residential target area over here is just that residential area um, behind the commercial buildings, and that is Lacan. Um, again, we want to just start small, make sure it's successful, and then we expand. So um, as part of the program, we want to, you know, apply for those grants, but also we want to, as part of the application, show to the state that we do have other programs to leverage. Um, it will make the application stronger, um, and also it will make it more attractive to the, to the residents. I am not sure if Marcia Williams is here. Again, I cannot see the list of my attendees because I'm sharing my screen. Okay, so Marcia is with Baltimore County GHCD. Um, she was invited to come talk a little bit about the programs that they do. I don't think she's here, but um, some of the programs that the county has include housing rehabilitation, um, lead safe grant program, affordable housing, um, closing cost program. And that housing rehabilitation we could use, um, I wouldn't say as a match, but um, you know, as a, I'm gonna let Amy, Amy Menzo is here. She can explain this better. Amy, do you wanna explain how we would leverage well, um, county programs? Yes. Marcia's word was leverage. Um, and so I think she just, they, they won't commit a specific number of dollars, but it'll be sort of as there are projects, uh, potential projects that come up, um, there, are, um, there are funds from the county that could be used to assist. Um, and Siobhan and Diversified um, have worked closely with Marcia over the years. They've done a number of acquisition rehabs. They've also done a number of weatherization projects right on uh, Flannery Road in this same area. So uh, as far as satisfying the state's desire for like a, a target area, a strategy, et cetera, it builds on work that Diversified has already done as far as where they've done it and um, work that's been funded in the past by the state through the same program. So there's yeah. a lot to it. Um, and anyway, so it'll be good to have uh, Marcia and the county's programs as uh, kind of the, to, to show that we're collaborating. Um, yeah, and I think, yeah, those key words are leverage and collaboration, that we're not coming bare, you know, bare hands, we're coming with something and we're asking this, the state to kind of leverage to, to supplement. I have a question about this part of the program. Um, since we're going to be show, since we're going to do that, and this is the implementation work group, are they going to stand in the target area, not just every community, but since you pick Lachlan, 
and that's a good community because it does have a lot of older housing stock. Are they going to um, then um, have a special program of focus on the residents in Locker and to let them know about these grant opportunities as opposed to just hearing it through normal channels? The idea was to also, with a more limited area, you can see a bigger bang for your buck in terms of, you know, hopefully there'll be some exterior improvements on houses that you could notice when you walk down the street, that sort of thing. And when it's targeted, you see that impact. And it's also easier to do the outreach <laughs> if, if it's a manageable size um, neighborhood that you can you can literally go door to door with the information, if, you know. So it's, it's just a little, as opposed to, I don't know. When you mail it out to several thousand people, it, I, I have also found in my experience, people don't necessarily trust that your thing that you're doing is legitimate. <laughs> um, it's like, what? You want to give me free money? Yeah. It, people, it, it takes some time for people to believe that. The, and I'm not trying to be, that, that, that's what I found um, in working on the east side in Dundalk. And I, I suspect something, just building that trust and it's easier to do that with a smaller target area to start. Can I say something since I got my hand? Yeah. Um, I, Carla Nelson Chambers, I am in Randall's town. I'm in Hernwood Heights. Um, but prior to be coming here, I had a lot of my um, work with my company in Prince George's County. My first contract was with Housing Department of Community Development. And it was, um, it was the, um, the, the the federal dollars that they would get and they would flow down to the states and there was a lead-based paint program and we were trying to get the houses that were built before 1974 to free them of lead-based um, and there was also a chcd um, monies for and it was based on income and so if you were if your income because there were a lot of elderly in the palmer park area in kentland and palmer park is known for uh Sugar Ray Leonard, and, you know, his his mom and grandmother were over there. Long and short of it was, if your income was in a certain area, this grant money was free. And then if it was a little bit higher, then you paid like a 2% interest over 20 years. The money was used for um, roof, driveway, hot water tank, and um, I think H, H, v, H, 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 you know, the, HVAC. thank you, I've got my, I'm all discombobulated. And and people and you're right. People were saying the government's trying to come in and take my home, and that wasn't the, the issue. The issue was they were trying to make the homes increase in property value so that that area of property value would be increased. And you know, so instead of the housing department doing it, they found someone to come and do the program. And we had an outreach because of our um, network of resources. We came in. And did it. And what we did was, as one of my partners says, you find Miss Jones, whoever Miss Jones is the the woman who kind of heads up the community, and you take care of her first. And then she tells everybody else, baby, they hook me up, they can hook you up too. So you're right. Starting in a smaller community, you get a win. And 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 then the county also tells whoever the county council person is and the state delegates and senators because you're improving their district. And what that when they realize that they're going to help fund more money to the programs. That's what happened when, when I did this back in the 90s. So there are monies that that that's that wraparound service that DHCD would provide for the residents as what we're doing is helping that corridor along Liberty Road for the commercial side. And we become the ambassadors on behalf of the county to say why this is working and why people should um should um, support the program and get involved in the programs, how, however they're developed. So they can be very successful. Yeah, I think you um, summarized it really well. Um, <laughs> this, this, that's what we're trying to do here too. Yes, Ms. Danielle? No, I was gonna say, I totally agree. I put my hand up, I totally agree, agree with what Carla said. It's, um, you know, people um, being reassured um, because of just different things that have happened in the past, but also too, and I think we talked about this before. I'm not sure because I don't have uh, my exact notes in front of me. But when Carla touched, Carla touched on that just now, the federal dollars is this. Does any of this money have to do with some of the money that we were supposed to get from the um, administration coming down federal and then moving through the states and then 
through the county levels to the county executives, and they were supposed to distribute it to different yeah. counties. No, this is not ARPA. I think that's you're talking about the, the ARPA money. This is not ARPA. This is going to be money coming from the state, um, okay. the the mainland DHCD. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because I probably talked about it before, but I wasn't sure. Thank you. Okay, sure, you're welcome. Any other questions? Yes. All right. Linda has her hand up. Yeah. Oh, here is um, Marcia. Who owns these properties? In other words, I'm concerned about how much diversity there is in terms of who will be able to access this this money. First of all, let me just clarify that the lower end of Liberty Road should not be compared with Dundalk. Different economic level, different education level, different social life. They're not the same people. So I, I kind of trying to imply that they're the same. I just sometimes okay. people don't believe a, a postcard that comes in the mail. Right. Uh, but my concern is this, like you were saying, um, the county council person whose district this is, is in will get credit for all the improvements. Well, that now is uh, going to be Izzy Patoka. And uh, as far as I know, his area of Pikesville has already been improved. My big concern is this. Years ago, when Kevin Kamenitz was in office, he said that he had a plan to improve both the Rice's Town, Pikesville area, and the full length of Liberty Road. He said that because Pikesville was a smaller area, don't worry, trust me, I'll get to Liberty Road. I'm going to start with the smaller area of Pikesville. Pikesville is now on its second or third improvement, and we're still waiting for Liberty Road. So my concern is, even though you're saying we're going to improve this area, which is now also going to be part of Izzy Patoka's uh, district, um, will it ever get out of that area? Who owns these properties? Is it diversified among um, people from all different backgrounds? Do we have people who are um, historic African-American population? who are going to benefit as, as business owners as well. A lot of people see, see other folks benefiting and not the folks who historically established the Liberty Road Corridor. And I wanna speak up for those folks because they want their share too. So Diversified does not own any of these properties. Well, I know they don't. I know I'm very familiar with Diversified. And and we are not picking an area because of ownership, but we are picking an area that needs renovation, an area that needs revitalization. Um, I am all about making sure that it's done in an equitable way. I have not pulled property owners to even know who owns these. I know it's owned by different people. And one of the challenge that we're gonna have um, is to be able to convince those property owners to actually um, make sure that they, they they use the program, that they, they accept mm -hmm. to, to do, if we do any facade improvement, that to have that commitment from property owners might be challenging. Um, Having said that, I, I, I do understand where you're coming from, and I understand that um, you are afraid of other people taking credits for, you know, um, state money that the committee maybe have worked for, but I don't think it would be the case here. We are just, again, the, the Liberty Road study um, start from the city line all the way to Lions Mill, and mm -hmm. the redistricting may have put this area, targeted area into Easy's council money district, but it's still Liberty Road in our hand, in our in our eyes. Um, anybody, I know I see a lot of hands, but I do have so many slides that I want to go through. And I know Marcia is also here, and I want to give her an opportunity for Marcia to actually explain how we can use the county programs to leverage resource. Hi, Marcia. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Marcia. How are you? I'm Marcia Williams from Baltimore County Department of Housing and Community Development. And some of you may know about our programs, and some of you may know, um, may be the first time you're learning about them. But we have um, the housing rehabilitation program, which has been in existence for 45 years. Um, and these are federal funds where we come in and help to do the repairs in your home, um, deferred maintenance, we replace roofs, we redo kitchens. A lot of people are aging in place. We do come in and we try to assist with modifying your home, like with the grab bars, the walk-in showers, based on the needs that you have. Um, this is income driven and it's basically 80% of area median income. And we can get information out to you if you have anyone that fits that description or needs some um, deferred maintenance repairs or rehabilitation to their homes. We have the Let's Safe program and we received a, a gift from Baltimore, I mean, from Department of Housing and Community Development, $2 million. And we are supposed to help to remediate lead in 93 homes throughout the county. These homes have to be a child that may live or visit in your home under the age of six. And we can come in and test the home and re remediate the areas that have led in. And this is the only house built prior to 1978. And that's when they abandoned lead and they they could no longer even live in the paint, but um, lead may still be in the home somewhere and some of your water lines or whatever. We can look into that or outside some of the shingles, some of the clapboards or whatever. We could come in and, and take a look at that and remediate the um, lead that we can find there. All of this is free. It's a grant. And then with, uh, with um, the next program is affordable housing. We work with nonprofit organizations such as Diversified Housing and a couple other ones where they come in and they buy up some of the dilapidated or foreclosed properties in your area and they fix them up to be sold to first, I mean, to home buyers that are 80% of area median income particular first time home buyers. And then our final program is the closing cost program. And that's where we assist first time home buyers with at least $10,000 that can be used for down payment or closing costs. And um, they would have to remain in the house for seven years. And that's also a deferred loan, which if they stay past seven years, it reverts to a grant. Are there any questions? Okay. Hello? Yes. Do anyone have any questions? Oh, I think Ms. Carla does. You are okay. muted. Okay. She's muted. <laughs> Still muted. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm trying to get that cursor to move. <laughs> Um, Ms. Williams, I was explaining to the group, I actually worked on a project just like this in Prince George's back in the 90s. That's how old I am. Um, <laughs> in the HCD, do you all manage the um, um, Main Streets program or is that another department? No, that's another department. We do not manage that in our department right now. Okay, so then you then may be. Gone, then can, can Main Streets help with that work on the on the commercial side, not the housing. That's no. gonna be different. Okay. No, so you are confusing. There's two DHCD here again, because Baltimore County, their office changed their name to Baltimore County DHCD. This money is coming from the state DHCD. And we cannot do the main street because that area is not a main street designation. Well I was gonna okay so I'll talk to you about that later in reference yes. to possibly making it one. Okay. Uh, 
All right, so um, Marcia, thank you for the explanation. I attempted to explain that, but again, um, Amy was helping me a lot better. Okay. But thank you. We were Danielle we were has formal, a question. We were Danielle formal, has a question. Okay, can I just say something? We were formerly known as the Office of Community Conservation. And we went through planning and then we're in, it was in Baltimore County Department of Housing and Community Development. And the programs that I'm discussing tonight, they have been around at least 20 years mm -hmm. that we've been able to provide services throughout um, communities in Baltimore County. If you need additional information, please feel free to call me. And we can talk through, or if you know somebody that needs some assistance, please do not hesitate to give us a call. Marcia, I think there are some, um, some comments in the chat. I think I have seen something pop up where they wanted you to come talk to the community association. Again, I cannot see the whole chat room, but check out the chat, chat for comments, please. Okay, then. And if you, Villanova, if y'all would, if y'all would like to, for me to, um, come out or send you some information for your newsletter. I'm going to put my phone number in the chat. Thank you. And my email address, and then you can email me directly and I will get something for your newsletter. It okay. will be there by Friday. Okay. Thank you. So that Thank will you. make your June 15th deadline. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Matthew. You're welcome. All right, so, and I think um, Carla has, you know, touched on this because um, when she talked about, you know, how the community can support the program, make sure that, you know, they promote, they do the outreach. So, again, this is not a done deal yet. Um, I, we haven't finalized anything with Diversify. Again, we don't know the details of the programs. All we know um, is that we, it may be a combo for the commercial. It may be some, um, you know, facade improvement grant. And then for the residential, it could be some um, home, home rehabilitation um, combo loan grant. Again, I don't have those details, but I will let you know as soon as it gets finalized. And if it gets finalized, what I was saying earlier is that we are going to need commitment from the property owners um, to make sure that they will take advantage of the program. And same thing for the, uh, you know, for the, for, the, for the commercial, but also the residential part. And your role um, as the committee members will be to try to, you know, support the program, promote the program, spread the words out. Um, if you live in the neighborhood, try it out, um, you know, and make sure that people can know that there is no catch <laughs> behind it, um, that this is real. And all the county is trying to do is just revitalize the area. All right, so before I get into the the fun stuff, any questions with yeah, the, the question plan? The, um, the, I know the Dundalk area is having the housing resource fair coming up this weekend. Uh, are there any plans to have a similar housing resource fair targeted just for this area, for the Northwest area? So Dundalk, they have a community development organization. Um, Liberty Road is in the process of creating one. Um, we are actually in the process of going to the whole um, uh, process of, 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 of uh, coming up with a contract of uh, an entity who will be hiring someone who will be creating that. Mm -hmm. um, and for that reason, uh, there is none, no organization that has the capacity to all those events for Liberty Road at this time. And again, Amy, if you can add to it or, you know, make sure that what I'm saying mean, is right. No, I'm Gay, not... can I um, just briefly say something? Sure. We are in, we're in the Randallstown Library. I have someone in the Randallstown Library um, at least once a week um, giving out applications for the lab program, it is our plan to try to bring out a resource fair. The librarian would like for us to come in to use her library to do a resource fair. So we in the we're in the mix of um, trying to pull that together. 
and I will get back with Nagay because if some of you, um, if some of your community members would like to assist us with that, we would appreciate all the help that we can get. Um, we are looking at bringing our resources, our lenders, um, our housing counseling agencies. We are trying to sit down and talk to people about the rehabilitation, all the resources that we have, we are in the preliminary stages of trying to bring it to, to the Randallstown community. I think that'd be a great project for this committee to, to help promote and, you know, support, but that's just, <laughs> you know, when, when we previously had it and I've had to organize these things, long time ago. So before there was a community conservation, it was a, a community services development. Um, but um, when this was held before, it was held in round robin. So people went from room to room to room with different pieces of information or from area to area. We gave a couple of them over at the armory that is in the you know, downtown Towson area and then the state armory and people went from area to area to area and their last stop was to meet actually with the lenders, but they had to register ahead of time. So are you talking about that same sort of thing? Yeah, something similar to that and, and thank you for bringing it up, Ms. Dorsey. We used to, um, we used to do that a lot and we we're trying to get back into that practice of coming to the communities and bringing out our resources and bringing people with us. So um, we kind of got away from that when we left community conservation, but we're going back to that. So we're yeah. looking um, to kind of launch these in various communities, whichever community would like to have us, we want to come and work there and, you know, bring our resources and you know, we would need you to help bring the people out. <laughs> All right, very good. So I wanted to say, even if we finalize the plan and we apply for the grant, um, it doesn't mean that we're gonna get awarded. Um, this is very competitive, just just as a FYI. Um, you know, it could be that we ask for 10, I don't know, I'm just throwing out things there. We ask for like 100K, but we only get 50K or we ask for 50K and we don't get nothing, um, just as a FYI. But I think it's always good to try it. Um, and if we are not successful this year, we try it again next year. Um, and that's what all the communities do. They just take advantage of these grants and, and, and they apply and, and they revitalize the area. Doesn't matter what district they are located. I think it's just making sure that, you know, the neighborhood looks good, um, the mm -hmm. property values um, go up, um, and 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 everything looks good. So any other questions before I move on? All right, so let's talk about the fun stuff, the cans and the benches. <laughs> so <laughs> just to update you, um, we did an inventory and we said that we were going to replace all of the trash cans on Liberty Road and that was 64 trash cans. Um, just as a reminder, we have 250k from this from the county. Um, we receive a quote from the vendor. The 64 cans going to cost $60,544. And that includes quote for the cans and also a quote for the liners. So those 64,544 is just to produce the cans. Um, then we have to also find a contractor that we are not able to find at this time. Everybody's busy. I don't know for what reason, um, but everybody that we've been trying to reach out, um, they cannot, they, they don't have the capacity either to do it because 64 trash cans is large. It's a large project um, or they just don't have time or they are just overwhelmed with other orders. So we are still trying to find a contractor, but I wanted to let you know that it's going to cost at least 15,000 if we find a contractor willing to remove the existing cans and install the new ones. So when I sum up everything, the cans by itself is going to be 30% of the total budget that we have right now. We have not placed the order yet, 
the vendor that we um, found called EcoVision Environment, they require to put 50% down now to lock the price, um, and then they can deliver the trash cans in nine months. And I think I kind of like this agreement that we have because I believe that in nine months, we should be able to find a contractor. And doing it this way, we can lock the price, making sure it doesn't go up next year, because um, right now they are 846 each. Um, excuse me. Um, I think India may know. At the last uh, Villanova meeting, there was a minority contractor that um, is involved in uh, removal and, and that sort of thing. Is there a special require a special skill set or requirements? Because this seemed like a person who um, might be open to uh, taking on a, a smaller contract like this, even though it involves a lot of work. India, do you remember that person? Oh yeah, uh -huh. I have his information. Yes. Do you do you think that this is something that he would be? I'll definitely check and see. Um, again, with the county, um, you can send me the information and we can check if they are part of our master database. Uh, because if they are not, then I have to, um, you know, create a bid and and let other people bid for the work. Um, if they are already in the database, then it's easier. We can just pick out of those people. Um, if not, we have to to create a bid. But please let me know. Um, I have a question. Are we this money just covers the cost of purchase and installation, correct? Yes, the total of sixty plus fifteen thousand. Okay, okay. I'm I'm I, I just if th if this is not the place to discuss it, you can tell me. Uh, I'm glad to see that. We are going to get um, better trash receptacles and benches. However, um, a bigger issue is the maintenance. So, is there a separate contract that's needed for maintenance, or are we going to talk about maintenance of these items as as another step in this implementation? Uh, I think that's a great point that you're bringing up because this cost right now the thirty percent is only for for buying the cans and installing them. Maintenance is not part of it. Um, to me, 64 cans, there are already some good cans out there. And I think if we order 64 cans, there will be some that we can store just in case others get destroyed and we can replace them. And I think to replace one or two, it can be done by the county. We don't have to pay for installation or um, removal of those. So that's the only maybe option we have for maintenance. But other than that, we can discuss it now. Um, well, uh, uh, um, maybe not. Maybe maintenance was the wrong word. Maybe the word I wanted to say was um, policing. Because when I mean maintenance, I mean the cans get full and no one empties them. Oh, yeah. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about maintenance. Because, um, I mean, the cans are there and... The, the fact that the cans overflow to the point that it overflows onto the ground indicates two things. One, the cans are not large enough. And two, no one is regularly emptying the cans. And with the larger cans, um, maybe it won't overflow as fast, but apparently no one empties the cans. And if there is a separate contract needed to, now that we have these cans, we need to make sure that they are emptied on a regular basis. That's what I was talking about by maintenance. If I can, um, um, I remember in our first meeting back in February when you had Scott on from, he was the- Solid West. Pardon? Solid West Management. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, with Scott Krell. Yeah. And he, he told us that the reason why we weren't adding trash cans is because the contract that they have with their contractor was only to cover the trash cans that are currently on Liberty Road, so we were going to at least um, replace those that were old to improve them. And he indicated to us that they were they collect the the contractor does it twice a week. And if there wasn't and they were overflowing, he gave us his number so that he could make the call and tell them to go to go get those cans that were overflowing. The I actually passed this information on to 
um, another organization I'm a part of and the number that he actually, I even called it and it doesn't go to him. So um, if you're able to give us the right number for Scott, that would be helpful because he told us in that meeting, give me a call. I'll make sure that if, if it needs to be an additional pickup that they would do so. But the number that we got wasn't valid. Uh, but so it wasn't valid. Uh, you were not able to talk to anybody regarding, correct. you know, picking up actually somebody. If I'm not mistaken, it was somebody else's number in a different department or something like that. And I can share that with you, you know, in an email. Okay. But, um, yeah. That so the answer to Miss SL's question is they already have a contractor that manages those 64 cans, which was why we couldn't add on any more because it would change the contract that they have. But the problem we talked about was the overflow. These new cans are supposed to somehow prevent as not as much overflow, but if they do occur to give him a call and he would have somebody come out and get it done. Um, I, I appreciate the information and we can move on. We don't have to play with the point, but we pay our taxes. I understand. We know where the cans are and I'm glad we're getting larger cans because it probably will help with overflow, but we should not have to call because no one, because people are driving by and ignoring the cans. And I'm not talking about at one time, a little incidental thing. And I think anyone who lives in the community off Liberty Road knows this is routine, this is regular, this is ongoing, and this is a deep rooted problem. It's not a problem where, let me call and say, hey, you forgot a can. But we can go and I, I don't want to believe it. Yeah, right. this, is, uh, oh, this is Devon um, from Stony Brook. I don't believe having larger trash cans is going to make a difference. I think it's it's the maintenance or a schedule for when it's emptied is more of an issue. I mean, the bigger the trash cans, the more people are going to put in there items that don't really belong in these types of trash cans or they place them around. Um, that's how I see it when I look at certain, um, when I go to certain areas. So it's basically getting as, as I think Linda Dorsey Walker had said, you know, getting that maintenance, having a schedule and, and having it consistent. Um, on a regular basis is where the main, I see the main issue. Okay, so um, I think I know during the, the past town hall meetings, some of you had addressed this issue in front of the county executive. Um, as we all know, this is an operating fund. Um, it's already budgeted in the, um, you know, in, in, in the budget. Um, and increasing the pickup might not be something that they have budgeted for for the county this year. But again, um I want I want to make sure that this is transparent that you that this committee is going to be spending 30% of the total budget on cans only, not cans and benches. I'm gonna talk about benches later, but 30% is going on cans and I just want to make sure before we put we place the order that everybody is um you know in line with 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 this with this. Are you saying that, and I and I am all for these cans, trust me, I'm all for the cans. Bigger and better sounds good in this problem. But are you saying when we come ask for and we get commitment for the purchase of the cans, that this does not automatically go into a county database, that the people who are responsible for going up and down the roads and emptying these cans are now going to see the 64 cans and say, oh, I don't do that because um, that's not on my schedule. Or once these cans are in place and we turn the location into the county, will that then be included in their uh, pickup schedule? So these cans that we are replacing are all existing right now and all have been budgeted for pickup. So it's just a model of making the cans larger and newer, but they will get picked up at the same locations because what they do is they 
remove one, they replace one at that same location. Okay, then maybe the larger cans will help with the overflow. We'll see. Hey, I think I, I think it's a good thing because some of those cans I heard have not been replaced for the last 20 years. Um, some of the, the cans are really tiny, um, inadequate, the receptacles. Even though these are 32 gallons, the liners have that conical shape um, that is approximately 40 gallons. So they are technically 40 gallons. Um, I know Pikesville is in the process of getting um, new trash cans, exactly the same vendor, exactly the same style. And I'm excited for Liberty Woods, but I just wanted to share this with you guys and make sure that um, it's okay to give that 50% down and keep working on a contractor who's going to be removing and installing the new cans once they are delivered. Do we take a vote or something? <laughs> What color will they be? Will they be a specific color or have a specific appearance? Um, the liners are black and also it's black steel um, for the cans. I see someone put in the chat that the current pickup schedule is currently twice a week. I did that. Um, but it says if people continue to dump daily, it won't matter. And I'm glad to know that's twice a week. So from now on, I will feel completely comfortable to put in a 311 request where they did not pick up that can, that trash. Mm -hmm. And something I wanted to add, um, I think you may have seen this sign, spread the love, not the litter. Um, yeah. This is a sign that's coming, you know, um, from the Department of um, uh, Environment and Preservation. Um, preservation and sustainability, and they will be putting these signs on all of the trash cans on Liberty Road. Um, could they also put another sign there on those trash cans on Liberty Road that says, if this can is full, call 311. And so, um, that, we, because of, I mean, for example, I know one can notorious, this is outside the area, but for example, the, uh, the can up on um, Old Court Road in front of Mount Olive Church. It's a there's a bunch there and it overflows. It's there for days. And if there's this sign up here that says if this is overflowing, call three one one. Someone's sitting there looking, getting disgusted. They mm -hmm. got their phone. They're going three one one that request. Hey, pick up this can. And maybe even to have some type of uh, special number like A two or something, so they know where that can is or something. I don't know, but I, I'm I mean to say if this is for call three one one like you see on the back of cars. If this person is driving recklessly. Call this number, maybe to put on the cans. If this can is full, call 311 might be. That's a good idea. In fact, instead of a separate sign, why don't we put a QR code on it so that people driving by that don't feel like walking over there and tapping down numbers that just, you know, I, yeah, you can you put, uh, you know, call 311, but also give people a chance to use the technology. And when they put the QR code, that QR code should be linked to a serial number that's only on that can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great idea. Adding the, that, adding, adding the um, QR codes too. So uh, put it on the can. Let people know it's giving the residents a little bit of control over their lives. Yeah, when and they're not taking care of business, I have the option. I have the ability. I'm empowered to let the powers that be know they're not doing their job. And I think adding some way for them to know what to do. When it's not right, it's it it empowers them, even for that little thing. All right, I think these are great ideas. I will be, I'll find out. I know yeah. when I brought up the 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 message thing, I asked if we have flexibility in changing the message. But this is the one that we have to have the whole county. But I will ask about the three one one. I will ask about the QR code, and I will let you know. By email or at next meeting. And also, and also put on there a fine for people that don't put stuff in the trash. That's probably where, um, you know, we can get the extra money to pay for all this stuff is fining people for littering because that will stop them. They actually litter. I mean, you can drive down the street on any street. I'm sure, you know, all over Maryland, but particularly in Randallstown, since I live in this area, people just throw things out the window like it's their home or something. 
I mean, it's like, it's, it's ridiculous. And I think if we start putting a dollar sign to some of the stuff, people would think twice about all this stuff. And plus this, it'll help us pay for all this stuff too. I agree. Um, I will get back to you um, on what I find out. Cause I know with the fines, we could maybe come up with a program who's going to be policing it, who's going to be there making sure that um, it's enforceable. So benches, again, I have not even looked at benches because I was so tied up with the cans. And I think once I have a, um, it's gonna be the same deal. It's just finding the contractor, which we already have finding the, um, um, no, the vendor we have, but we don't have contractor to replace and install. And again, I'm still waiting on locations for, for benches. I still don't have a final number of benches on Liberty Road where we want to add, where we want to replace. As we talk about committee and subcommittees, it would be one assignment for that committee to go and, and count and come up with locations for new um, benches. And once I have that final count, I can start the process of ordering benches. All right, so now I want to talk about subcommittee role. We only have 30 minutes left. So I brought up the um the idea at last minute uh, last meeting. So the subcommittee and I also asked if people were interested to email me. Some have emailed me. Um, um, and we can still, if you know your subcommittee, I can fill it out now. <clears throat> so the the main role is to be able to implement those projects that I have shared last time, the projects that are in the sustainable community action plan but in a, in a smaller group setting. We are 19 people so far. Um, so I'm thinking to make sure that they are balanced to have six or seven people um, per group. So what you're gonna be doing is meeting with your subcommittee members once a month um, between you know, monthly meetings, um, either to you know, do assignments or to, to talk about projects. Um, and then at the monthly meeting, each of those subcommittees will be reporting on their work, their assignment, their findings. So I would like to have a lead for each of these subcommittees. Um, and as you volunteer for a group, let me know if you also want to be that lead. So we have three subcommittees so far. Feel free to change them, feel free to add. But these subcommittees are coming from that action plan. So these are the sustainable community element. And I have combined some of the elements. So the first one will be environment and quality of life. The second one will, will be economy, promotion, rebranding. And then the third one will be housing and transportation. This is the best way I could combine them. Let me know if you wanna change these or if you wanna add to it. Um, do you all think that three subcommittee is enough? Mm -hmm. Right. I, I oh. have a question before you yes. go forward. Sure. If you're interested in more than one, can you serve on more than one? You can certainly serve in more than one. It's going to be double the work for you, but yes, you can. <laughs> um, so, I have, yes. I have a question because I pulled the plan off and you had the three subcommittees. You had environment, quality of life, um, economy, rebranding, and so, okay. Uh, economy, promotion, rebranding, and housing and transportation. But I found another one, um, local planning and land use was this, this dropped, I mean, because I, because what I pulled off had that also. As yes. So you write that um, as part of the sustainable community, um, land use local planning is an element. And it's mostly an element to make sure that um, you, you have, I'm trying to think what was in there. Um, it's, I think it was more about, you know, like uh, regulations with county regulations and, and stuff like that. Okay, so that's why it's not listed as one of these subcommittees. And that's why it's not listed in one okay. of these because either they were no like real projects um, in there Okay. But if something that you want to add, um, I can add it. Oh, no, I just want to, I just 
you know, left one, one to left to the subcommittee. That's why. Yeah. I have, I have another question. Um, sure. When you said to be the lead of subcommittees, what does this mean? Does this mean that um, the subcommittees will no longer be going through you to um, say, okay, here's going to be the link for your subcommittee meeting? Or will, um, you, so you're saying the subcommittees, you guys are responsible to go off, make contact, uh, connect with each other, agree to come together in some way to share ideas and perspectives and then come back and report. Is that what, how this is supposed to work? And you're right, and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so yes, so what I'm trying to do here um, is I'll, I'll be here. I'll be here for, for not for your subcommittee meetings, but for the monthly meetings. I'll be here by email in case you have questions. But what I'm trying to do is maybe, I don't know if this is the right word to say, but like detach myself a little bit and have you guys lead. Um, not sure that this is the, this is how I should explain this, but but that's what I'm trying to do here, like give you more um, leadership role in in implementing this. The assignments may be coming from me, but it will be up to the lead to make sure that they interact with the committee members, um, you know, to come up to to complete the assignment. But I will be here to, to for support and guidance. I have a, I have a question. These subcommittees, do they apply only to the targeted area or for the full Liberty Road area we've been talking about previously? For the whole Liberty Road area. Okay. So the targeted. Okay. The last Sorry. meeting we were talking about the need to separate housing from transportation. Oh, well, they okay. I could do that. I could because housing and transportation might be two really broad topics, not even. So I could I could do that. That's one that I was a little bit unsure, but I didn't want to have too many subcommittees. But if that's the way to do it, I can do that. Now for transportation, are we specifically talking about implementing the loop on this side of the county? We're talking about implementing those projects that were listed in the action plan. Um, but one of the things that the county executive talked about, see, I started working on trying to get a loop in the Liberty Road area 30 years ago. And I used to be part of the transportation committee for a long time. So I want to find out, are we now talking about bringing that same transportation option that gives free transportation to people over in Towson? Can we bring that same free transportation option to this area? Because that's what I'm interested in seeing. Yeah, transportation. There are a lot of older yeah. people in this area that don't drive anymore, and they want their option to go from Owings Mills to their appointment over in, uh, you know, Northwest Hospital Center and up and down Liberty Road. We should be able to do what they're doing over there. Yeah, that, yeah that would be that would be an eligible project under transportation. Yeah. Okay, so then I I want to work on transportation because right, I so think that's a doable. And and he's made a commitment, and I want I want to make sure yeah. that it gets lived up to. So do I. Yeah, I'll be on Devon Parks will be on the um, housing and transportation. All right. And I'm gonna hyphenate that. Yeah. <laughs> and then um was that um Devon Park? Yes. Who wants to be in transportation? Did I get that right? Yeah, capital B. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, so the housing is not with transportation, you're dividing it up? Uh I think that's what I heard. Is that right? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I want to specifically work on the transportation. Okay, that's fine. Would you like to be also in housing, Ms. Parks? No, one's enough. Okay. So, out of the people that housing, transportation, it, ooh, it, it, I see messages, but they pop really quickly. And I think, was that India artist who wants to be in all of the subcommittees? <laughs> 
I can't see the chat room. Yeah, just the two. I want to do the housing and transportation and the econo the economy promo and branding. Okay, so the housing and transportation are two different subcommittees now. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I must not have been listening. I was <laughs> so which one you want now? Housing or transportation? Housing. Housing. Okay, good. This is Danielle Smith. I was um like housing and community the environment. Uh, okay, hold on. I didn't get that. I was under India. Let me do India before I miss this. So India wants housing and um and what else? Economy? Yes. Oh. Thanks. Sure, you're welcome. And then, um, I'm sorry, who was that? Who, who was that? Who wanted to be where? One of our three co I'm sorry. I'm I think it was Danielle that was talking. Uh, this is Daniel Smith. Daniel um, housing. Smith. Housing, sorry. Daniel Smith, housing. And um, I think it was something about in, environment. Um, yeah. I can't see it now. Okay, so Daniel housing and uh, environment quality of life. Okay, can you say that again? You want environment, environment quality, quality of life? life. Oh, was that? Yes, yes. That's Daniel Smith. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. Please add me there as well, since yeah, we're here right now. I, I, I want to be a member, but not the chair of that, but I want to uh, chair the transportation. Did I tell you the name right, Michelle? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then Linda, you said you want to chair transportation? Yes. Is that what you said, Linda? I said I want to chair the transportation because I'm going to make sure that we get it. Okay, and then if you see your asterisk with your name, you're the chair of that. <laughs> um, housing. Um, Anybody else? Uh, this is Sheila Lewis. I'd like to be on the economy and rebranding. Oh, economy and rebranding, not not the environment quality of yeah, life. I'm, I'm on that one. I'm 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 on the environment and healthy life. I want to be on the. I also want to be on the. No, I'm. Let, Once let, both. Let me stay where yeah. I am. Let me stay on environment. Then go to the economy and rebranding. Yeah, I want to be there also. Yeah, Please I said I wanted to well, also too. be on quality of life one too, as a member. Sorry. Who's talking? I'm sorry, Linda. You said what? I wanted to also be on the quality of life one also as a member. As a member, where's my quality of life? This is a popular one. Um, okay, and then any volunteer to lead this. This one, we already have a lot of people in here. I volunteer. And was that Sheila? I volunteer for that. Lady. That's Sheila Lewis. Yes. Sheila. Okay, good. Um, Bonnie, can you add me um, to economic development? Economic development. That was Michelle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, and then this one, Carla, Carla Nelson is leading the, the economy. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Who am I missing? You're missing Kaylin, but I can't commit right now. Okay, I'll Kaylin. commit later. Kaylin, you can email me any. I mean, All right. I wouldn't say any time, but thank you. Sure. Did anybody else type something in the chat room? Because I don't have access to it. I can't see. Oh, I see Cynthia is here. Cynthia, hi. So Cynthia is our new member. Cynthia, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Cynthia Gilliam. I'm on the BNCA board. And this is my first meeting. I apologize for getting getting there late. I just happened to see it. My apologies. <laughs> no worries. Welcome. Um, we are glad to have you. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. So I've come in the middle, so I wasn't exactly sure what what was happening as far as signing up for something. On oh, yeah, we. Yes, so we are creating subcommittees um, of different topics to implement projects. I can um, 
you know, I can call you or you can call me later on and I can explain it better. And that way you can tell me which one you are interested in. Oh, will do. Thank you so much. Sure, you're welcome. All right, I'm checking to see if I have everybody. Sharon, are you interested in any of these subcommittee? You know what, right now, I don't think I can commit to one of the subcommittees. Okay, that's that's fair. What about Marilyn? Marilyn Evans? So housing, who wants to be the lead of housing? I only have India, India and Daniel. I can be on the committee. I can um, no longer be in a leadership role in anything right now. I'm just spread too thin. I got it. All right. Well, India, let me know. <laughs> no, no, not in a leadership role. No, <laughs> we we'll just have to work together. I guess till so hopefully somebody else. Maybe will we need to go teamwork back to makes combining. the dream work. We can do it. <laughs> maybe maybe we need to go back to combining it. I thought it would be helpful if we did. Combined that sounds like a good idea, Linda. Yeah, yeah. Transportation and housing. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. All right. So, um, looks like we are right on time. Um, so I want to talk about the next meetings. So the next meeting is July 13th, and unfortunately, I have to cancel that one because I would be on vacation. Um, the next meeting after that is August 10th, and I wanted to know if. We should have a meeting because I know it's going to be in the middle of summer. Will you guys be available to attend the meeting if I um, set up one? What do you guys think? Can you make it after the 19th of July? It's oh, August 10th. Oh, yeah, July 10th. That's fine. August um, 10th. Um, I, I, am, I don't have a problem. As a matter of fact, I think considering this is June the 8th, Almost yes. 60 days, two months for the report back from the committees. I think that's a nice mm -hmm. space. Yeah. However, I, I'm still feeling unclear on the expectations of what the committees are supposed to accomplish. Uh, because in the action plan, these um, there are several strategies already identified under specific projects. So perhaps when you send out the information telling who's on the specific committees and what the committee specifically are supposed to be doing, it will help to clarify things. For example, under quality, I think it was under quality of life, uh, one of the strategies was about, um, uh, let's see, was about the, um, no, it must have been under environment, about the trash cans and, um, that was probably just about finished what we would because that was something that we worked on so it was easy to report back on that but then when you talk about some of these other things where you're saying you got to identify as a funding source and that kind of thing and i just was need to be clear about what the expectations you have for the committees to achieve um so you probably you can send that out um that it'll give us time to to get into that mindset and get into work yeah, and again, I will be giving you assignments um, every time, and your role will be to complete that assignment. For example, the next assignment will be to go to the action plan and pick those projects that belong to your committee. And once you pick those, maybe the next assignment will be prioritize those projects into short, medium, and long term. Then let's find funding to implement you know, however you come up like with the two projects, you know, the the the, the priorities. So so one and you know in that I will be giving you assignments for sure. You're not gonna be, you know, just left alone. Um and I'll be here to 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 support. But get ready to know that your next assignment will be to pick projects. And I would say if you have projects in mind that are not Part of the sustainable community, let's also add those to the list um, and, and see how we can start implementing. Yes, ma'am. Um, as far as I can see, we have some distinct projects that we can work on uh, for housing and transportation. Number one, 
is getting that transportation loop. That has to happen for Liberty Road so that we're not left out. Promises made have to be promises kept in this county. And I'm going to try to make sure that they keep that one. So that's one in the transportation area. But we've discussed over the last several meetings, we talked about a possible Main Street manager. We need to perhaps talk if even if we can't do it with this fund, how that could possibly happen or community development corporation. But in the shorter term, someone brought up earlier this evening, if we wanted to have a similar housing resource fair as the type that they're having over in Dundalk, then we need to try to support the county in its effort in bringing it to our area. So those yes. are what I see as deliverables. Okay. Um, and again, as part of your housing subcommittee, you can make sure that you bring Marcia to the community, different communities on Liberty Road to make sure that they have exposure on on county um county programs. I mean, those type of assignment will be coming to you, but I just don't don't want to like. Well, I'm not saying I'm all it's done. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. You need to prioritize, but those are specific things, specific assignments that we can pick and choose from. Okay. Um, in terms I, of deliverable. And Linda, I'm I like, ask a question. Going to be a fair. Mm -hmm. uh, we can all put in uh, with the fair that's going to be planned. What can our subcommittees add to that to make it more robust? You're right, and so You're right. all of us can have that as a strategy and bring our piece to that fair. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I just want to remind the group that the goal of this subcommittee is to implement the project in the sustainable community. So um, I feel like those should be priorities. And then if you have other projects not listed in there, we can, like I said, just always let's add it because the plan gets renewed. Um, every five years and at the renewal, we can make sure that those get put in the action plan um, so that when we apply for grants, the state can, um, it's, it's, it's easier and it's, um, it's easier to get the money that way because it's part of our sustainable community plan. Gane, are we empowered to reach out to county offices that would be related to goals within the action plan? Absolutely. Good question. Absolutely. And, and what about state? Because when you're talking about transportation, it's state and county. I mean, if you can, if you can um, take the initiative and, um, you know, bring staff, st state staff to talk to your subcommittee members and come up with solutions. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Sure. How much longer is the county going to use the Cisco WebEx? <laughs> they, we're going to go to Teams or Zoom so you can see everyone and also see the chat and also see the presentation. <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> and, I, and, and, and uh, Michelle, I only say that because I was a commissioner on the county's procurement commission and we all hated um, WebEx. But, I hate this thing. But the, but the, <laughs> T, the IT guy said it was the most secure. Remember when we had that breach? And so be, um, when they did Zoom, they um, there were people that had popped in. So from the IT house, they're like WebEx is the more secure than it than Teams or and I don't care for the Teams the way it looks. I hate that one. Zoom is the best, but Zoom is too open and it was it was causing too many problems for the county. So they were like, nope. And most of government will either use Zoom. I mean, will either use Teams or WebEx. Most county. State, all of them. yeah, I'm like you. I don't care for WebEx either, but <laughs> yeah, we tried to change it. And they That's like, part of the problem. I can't see who's actually talking. Yeah, yeah. it's but hard yeah. to relate to people when you can't see who. It's, is. And then when they don't have the camera on, that's even uh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. much better. But well, I had an important reason. I had to take my pipe cleaners out of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I put mine up so it wouldn't be looking like crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, um, all right, so July 13, no, no meetings. What about August 10? Are we good? We yeah, are we having yeah. a meeting August 10th? I think yeah. so. That's okay. fine. I'm sorry. That's good for now. Okay. 
So I will be emailing you your assignment. Um, uh, I'm thinking um, before July 1st, that mm -hmm. we have time. Um, and then August 10 meeting, uh, feel free to report um, mm -hmm. on your on your work. Yep. I have one more, um, um, maybe when we get further in, we'll see. Um, I, I have a need to contact the, uh, a staff or an agency on the uh, local or state level, or even a federal level become, regarding the issue. And I'm going to tell them I'm doing this for this particular um, project. And they're like, well, who are you? I mean, are we going that is this project was going to be publicized enough to know that uh, when we reference the project that the, that state person was like, oh, yes, I've heard of that project. So, and I understand community members are will be contacting me regarding this project um, that when we said I'm calling regarding this project that they will have heard of it and like, okay, yeah, I'll work with you on that. Are we going to have the, the skids grease just a little bit? Uh, that is a good question. I know this is a project that out there. It's in our um, hub. It's in, uh, it's in the county website. Um, it's part of the county executive plan. He's aware of what we are working on. Um, the sustainable community plan is a statewide plan. Um, and I believe that if you have been listening to the news or following the news, you should be knowing that we are implementing action plans. And it's, I mean, it's out there. I don't know how else to answer the question. Um, other than maybe if you want me to do that initial contact um, and then connect, connect you to either state staff or county staff, um, Has this plan been presented by you to the county council um, in a meeting for them to know about the plan and know that the community members are going to be working um, even beyond what's normally expected in these type of activities that they're actually going to be working on implementation plans at least, you know, presented to the county council. Like I said, you yourself, I'm not talking about us necessarily having to do it to say, okay, this is what's going to be happening in the community. So the councilman, the fourth district councilman is aware. Um, I have not presented this to all of the council, you know, men and women. Um, the um, planning board members are aware because we had the design guidelines approved um, not a long time ago. But other than that, we have not done anything formal um, to all of the county council. Okay, um, I will be contacting you um, regarding, uh, for example, I would think that um, uh, the, the district two, because the area you're talking about is now in the district two and um, uh, for the state, especially with the new authority that was got given, you know, by the state legislature um, um, for the contact, the state um, delegate and state senator, but I can get with you about that. Okay. Hi, did good. you did you send the slides, the actual the action plan slides out? Did I just totally I miss that email? I thought it was just me. Oh, I did. Yeah, I mean, we don't have the slides, so we're referencing and we don't know what we're. Okay, from about. last meeting. No, the slides of the action plan. I guess those slides, those slides were presented at last meeting. Right, but we need to read them. Okay, I can send you the PowerPoint again. I will send you the sustainable community plan again. Thank you. Um, and then, yeah, let me know if you have other questions. I don't think anybody has us, right? So we're. I, I think I sent that in an email. I have I sent the That's link. I was asking. I was looking. I didn't want to ask for them again if you sent them. I didn't. I didn't. You see haven't them. seen it. I don't think. I don't think it might hurt to send them out. I mean, I have them. Because you said go to this website, and when you went to the website, it said the point the plan. So I downloaded what it was. But um, I think at this point, now that we do, now that we have our attention focused intently on the plan, it might be a good idea to set it out for people to. I will do that. Look at it. I will do that. 
All right, it's 803. Um, any other questions? I want to thank Marcia, um, you know, for attending. Thank you for all the information and hope everybody got Marcia's contact in case you need her to come to your community meetings. Um, again, thanks to Amy Menza for her expertise in 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 grant um, and just community redevelopment in general. And thank you to all of you for attending. I will be sending a meeting. Let me know if you still wants to participate. Um, but I feel like if you are already a member in one of the subcommittee, you are vested and <laughs> too late for you to escape. Um, again, thank you. Um, I'll be sending you all those information you asked me. Have a good thank evening, you. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Nice meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. You so much. Good night. Sure. Good night. Good night.